currently 7 a.m. and I feel just about as tired as I look. But we're gonna get a workout in um, and go to Orange Theory. It is Veterans Day and so since I work in local government, I actually get most of the federal holidays off, Veterans Day included. And so I have a few different things I wanna get done today. One of which is take Melon to his one year vet appointment. And today, in the main part of this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to start a dog Instagram in 2021 and just a few different things you should consider when you are wanting to start an Instagram for your dog. But otherwise, stick around for this little vlog portion of the video. And thanks for watching as always. TJ drove us here, so I promise I wasn't vlogging while driving. <laughs> Let's do this. So here we go. So your first round is going to be a 30 second all out. You're going to This is Milton, the second we let him out of his crate. He's always so excited to see us in the mornings. Hey, hi, sir. He likes saying hi to Whoa. TJ first. <laughs> right Whoa. between the legs, right between the legs. Hi, sir. Woo. Big shakes, big shakes. Hi, buddy. Hi. Hi, love. Woo. You wanna go potty, Milton? Yeah. Let's go potty. Milton's wearing an easy walk harness at the moment because we're working on his leash walking still. And so in the moments where we can't train it, we put this on him to prevent the pulling. Stay. Okay. Good boy. I would say leash walking has definitely been the hardest thing we've had to train. And part of it's honestly just because he's so excitable and that is just a challenge we're having to overcome. He just wants to say to everybody and we're working on it slowly but surely. Stay. Stay. Okay. Good boy. It feels so weird taking him out this late because by this time I would be at work. It's 8.23 at the moment. All right. Go potty. Oh, good boy, buddy. I'll give him his privacy while he goes numero dos. And he, I think actually going later, it works in our favor because he's having to hold it for longer. Sometimes in the mornings, he will take forever to go potty just because, I don't know, maybe he doesn't have anything to give, but right now he does. Are you gonna go pee for me now? Maybe. Go potty. Oh, wow, buddy, you're so good today. You need to do some kickies? He only does the pee kicks sometimes. Oh, there we go. Gotta do the pee kicks. Legitimately, it's a pretty nice day here in Florida. We got a little bit of a cold front this past week, so this whole week it's pretty much been in the 70s. Today is actually the hottest it's been so far this week. It's progressively getting warmer and then I think Friday another front is moving and it's supposed to bring it back down into the low 60s low 70s so overall it's not a bad time to be in Florida figured I would let him do a little more sniffing and walking today since he was a good boy in his crate and it's pretty quiet here during the days there are a lot of cars here but I think the majority of people do work they just maybe work from home still, you know, because of the pandemic and everything. But it is, it is very quiet. What I don't like about taking him out in the mornings when I have to go, which is around 7 a.m., is that that's when most commuters are also taking their dogs out. So we have a lot of run-ins with other dogs and owners who don't necessarily have the best leash manners. Like there's this one lady who lives in our apartment complex who never has her dog on a leash. And multiple times now, this dog has like walked right up to Milton, gotten all up in his face, freaked him out. And like Milton doesn't react adversely to other dogs, but he does, as I mentioned, want to play with all of them. Come on, bud. And so when your dog just walks right up to him, obviously he lunges forward. And I feel like at this point, the whole training situation is so delicate 
that any small setback just brings us back a ton in our training. And so I guess this is just a general word to the wise to be a respectful dog owner and always have your dog on a leash when you're in a public place just because you never know what other dogs are like and you know if the owners might be working on something with them. Case in point, I just had to pick him up in the elevator because one of his doggy friends is in it and I just knew that if he saw him, he would be all jumpy and crazy. As always, the minute we get back inside, he goes to chewing his Benny Bone. Don't worry, buddy. We will get sponsored by Benny Bone eventually. Because I think you're probably one of their biggest fans. Look at this guy. He has legitimately had this Benny Bone, or not this exact one, but this type, ever since he was a puppy. He's been chewing it. This is probably his fourth or fifth Benny Bone. He loves them, and he doesn't resource guard them, which is my favorite part. Favorite part. We gotta feed you breakfast, though. Do you want breakfast? Yeah. Okay, just do it. I always see her face, but these white bits, the builder who did it, put the holes, so filling in these gaps, and along the outside as well, you see he filled in all the gaps so that the- I never used to be a big YouTube video watcher, but ironically, since starting this channel and YouTubing, and once again, like with COVID and the time when we were all at home, I've actually gotten really addicted to watching YouTube. I have a few different vloggers I like to watch, including Aspen and Parker, Judea Arthur, and uh, oh, the great Gatsby. How can we forget Gatsby the Corgi? Does anybody else do this too? Like for me, you know, we have all the streaming channels and stuff, but I almost think sometimes watching YouTube is more entertaining than you know, turning on Netflix or Paramount Plus or whatever. Just because, you know, there are so many different types of content and people on there that you can meet. If any of y'all have channel recommendations, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'm always looking for new people to watch, so I would love to hear what your recommendations are. This right here is what day off dreams are made of. I made Kodiak cake pancakes. And Kodiak Cakes is probably my latest pancake obsession. There is a protein pancake mix, so it's a little healthier than regular pancakes. And I added some chocolate chips to half of them. And then I have my coffee as always, so I'm gonna enjoy this. And then get ready for Milton's vet appointment, because that's at 11 and it's currently 9.30. Buddy, come here. You ready to go to the vet? Yeah. So we'll see you there. You're okay, buddy. Hi, sir. Do you like the little fall setup they made, bud? It's really cute, isn't it? Nope, don't mess it up, though. Oh, this room is really cute. I like the painting on the walls. You ready, bud? Ready for the vet? Yeah. Yeah, so far. Looks good and everything. We just left the vet. It was actually a super short visit, so he does not need his teeth cleaned, so that will not be happening. And health-wise, everything was good. He's gonna get some shots done in a few months from now, so like his Bordetella, his rabies, the ones like that. And then they shaped up his nails so that they look good. We're still trying to work through socializing him to the Dremel tool so in the meantime, I just have to bite the bullet and like pay people to do it. And I figured while I was there, might as well have them do it so we don't have to make a special stop today. He's probably gonna nap, if I had to guess. It, usually going into new situations like that, it just like wipes him out. So we're gonna do that and we'll see you at home. So now I'm gonna do some work for social media freelance stuff, and I'm currently watching the Colin in Black and White show on Netflix. It's really good. But I'm gonna do some work, and we'll check back in later.
so I just finished working and I see little Milton over here still taking a nap. This is what he does all day. He just sleeps and then around 6 o'clock he springs to life like a little crazy dog. So you want to start a dog Instagram. Let's dive into a bit of how that works and some advice I have if you are looking to start an Instagram for your pet. So in the past few years, we've seen an explosion in the idea of pet Instagrams. And a lot of the big accounts you see now are the original people who adapted first and you know who got that initial pick of the pet Instagram market. But that doesn't mean that you still can't make one and have good success with it. And there are a few tips I have for starting one that I've learned since running Milton's Instagram, which we've had for under a year because we got in January 2021. So we've had it for under a year and we're almost at 4,000 followers, which is pretty good in hindsight. It's not a ton, so I wouldn't consider myself a mega influencer, but I have learned a lot in doing it. And so I'm going to share that with you here. Combined with just a few of my own experiences working in marketing, for anyone who doesn't know, that's what I do full time as my job. I'm a marketer, I do a lot of digital marketing and things like that. And so let's get started. So I kind of just have a few different like random tips that I'm going to offer. Not necessarily in order of importance, but just some good things that I've noticed since having a dog Instagram in 2021. And as we head into 2022, some of the trends that we've seen rising, which will probably stick around. So probably one of the first and most obvious tips that I have is to use reels to boost your engagement and your exposure of your content. And really recently, I've actually been noticing the reels have picked up a lot on my account in addition to a lot of other people's, whereas typical photo posts, that engagement has actually dropped. But with Reels, I've had a bunch of Reels recently get over 10,000 views on them and, you know, a couple hundred likes, which for an account of a little under 4,000 is pretty good. And a majority of that traffic comes from non-followers. And through that process, I also do get a few more followers. And so how do you make a good reel? There are a few different ways you can do this and some suggestions that I have. The first of which to be using trending sounds. So if you go to the reels tab in Instagram and as you're swiping through, any videos you see pop up that have a lot of you know engagement and metrics behind them are usually sounds that are trending. So if you can pick up on that trend and use that sound too, you're more likely to get your reel featured. It's also good to design your reels for sound off because that's how most mobile users interact with the platform. And by this, I mean use captions on your videos and also use a brief intro with captions to let people know what your reel is about. This hooks them in, draws them in, and the captions keep them watching, even if there is no sound. And it's also good to oscillate between the ideas of keeping your reels both entertaining and informative. So for instance, one reel I just posted that did pretty well was the transition from Halloween into Christmas and it just like swiped up real fast and just went and it was super short. That one did really well. So that's an entertaining reel. It's also timely because it was going from Halloween, October 31st into November 1st. And then informative reels also do pretty well. So I did a reel explaining Tesla's dog mode feature and how it's good for dog owners. And that was another one that did pretty well on my account. So if you can oscillate between those two topics, that's another good way to keep your reels featured. I would err more so on the entertaining side and then, you know, sprinkle in informative ones every once in a while. But a lot of it really depends. Hey, buddy. A lot of it really depends on the type of account that you have. Next, I want to emphasize doing quality over quantity. There are a lot of people who think that you have to post every single day on Instagram to get traction, and that's simply not true. Nor is it really productive or possible for a lot of people because, you know, majority of us have full-time jobs and we can't, you know, post a dog Instagram every single day even if we'd like to. And so if you can at least stick with like three quality posts a week, I don't think you have to post every single day. Like Instagram's not going anywhere. 
And I've actually noticed days where I've gone, you know, three, four days without posting anything, I'm still getting followers and engagement on my old content that is performing well. And so you don't need to post every day, but when you do post, make it good content. The other flip side of Instagram, so you're posting content, you're using trends, you know, you're doing all this great stuff, is to then engage with people. And not just with people who are commenting on your post because that's a given, but engaging with other people within your niche. There are a lot of dog Instagram accounts out there, and if you go at it in the perspective of, you know, just wanting to get followers, you're going to have an account that really lacks engagement. However, if you are following other dog owners and, you know, engaging with their content, not only will your own engagement pick up in return, but you also might learn something. I've learned so much from this dog owner Instagram community that I never would have thought possible, but you can't learn anything unless you engage with those people. And in the same topic of like engaging and content is to really rely on stories to fill in those content gaps. So while I may not post, you know, more than three or four days a week, I usually try and post on stories at least once a day because it's something easy you can do. It doesn't require the content to be aesthetically pleasing, but it also allows for quite a bit of engagement. You can use things like the sticker reels, you can post links, you can ask your audience questions, all of that to keep them engaged while you're not necessarily doing a feed post. I also recommend to not overuse the link feature, which was just rolled out to all Instagram accounts because it's just annoying, honestly. If every single story you post is like, tap this, click this, it's gonna come off super salesy and I don't really recommend it doing that. I would maybe just sprinkle in, you know, the link every once in a while, you know, if you're sharing an informative article you found, if you're sharing your YouTube channel link, you know, sprinkle it in, but don't make it the focus of your stories. If you're looking to bump up the exposure of your Instagram posts, Tagging brands and using their hashtags is a really great way to accomplish that. And so I tag and use hashtags for a bunch of different accounts in my posts. Some of them are Corgi related, so my fave Corgi, Corgis of Instagram, Corgi Instagrams, to name a few. There's a bunch that I tag Dogs of Instagram, We Rate Dogs, Corgis, FTW, Pupflix, The Doggist. All of these accounts are looking for user-generated content to share and post. And when they're that big, they often rely on a branded hashtag to stay on top of people who are tagging them. So it's best to find the accounts that you would like to be featured in and not only tag them in the actual post in the photo, but use their hashtag in your collection of hashtags. And remember, you can only do up to 30 hashtags per post. Instagram did release an update saying that they recommended no more than I think five to seven, but I haven't necessarily seen any downsides with using more than that. So I guess until something happens, no, you can use up to 30 and if it works for you, it works for you. And if you're not sure where to start with adding hashtags to your post, I recommend looking at similar accounts to yours and seeing what hashtags they use with success to determine which ones you should implement in your own posts. So, you know, bigger Instagram accounts like Willow the Corgi or La Corgi, look at their hashtags and then from there you can kind of, you know, implement them on yours or just, you know, other people you follow in your same niche. It's also important to change up your hashtags depending on your type of post. So if, for instance, you were posting about social media accessibility, because I've done posts on that, it would be helpful to include tags on that in your hashtag lineup, or you know, take away certain tags if they don't match what you're talking about, just so they stay relevant. The next thing I want to talk about, and this goes to the very start of beginning an Instagram account, is to determine your account's focus. So when you start a dog Instagram account, you have to think about why you're starting it. Are you just focused on getting brand partnerships? Are you actually looking to connect with other dog owners? Do you just want like a digital scrapbook of your dog's memories to have? These are all valid reasons for starting an Instagram account, but they will determine the type of content that you post 
and your motivation for doing it. In my humble opinion, I would always prioritize connecting with others and creating memories over just getting partnerships because the reality is very few of us will actually become full-time influencers in the dog industry. I'm not saying you can't or you won't, but it's much more harder than it used to be just because of how saturated the market is. And so if you're just creating this account with a goal of becoming part of 15 billion ambassador programs and getting free bandanas, then you're gonna tire yourself out of it very quickly. And you also might tarnish your relationship with your dog in the process if you see them as just a money generator. You know, I've gotten a few different paid partnerships from Happy Mills Instagram, and they're nice and all, but I try not to make them the focus because that's really not what it's all about. And after you've determined what your account focus is, kind of in the same vein, but a little more specific, is what your account niche will be. So are you gonna be dedicated to showing off a particular type of dog sport? Are you going to talk about important topics, you know, pol politics, social issues, whatever? Are you gonna share tricks that you taught your dog? I would recommend finding at least something that you can focus on. Maybe it's some unique aspect of your dog's personality. Just something to differentiate you from other accounts. Even if it's not something terribly unique, but it just makes your account more interesting to follow. That's what I would recommend trying to find. And after you've determined your focus, determine your niche, next we get into the content creation side of things. And for me, a big help working full time and you know being a relatively busy person is to plan my content out. I use this free app called Unum, U-N-U-M, to lay out all of my content on the feed. And I like that this one actually syncs with my Instagram account so I can see as I post content, live updates and shows me how my future posts will look compared to the others. This is helpful if you're going for a certain edit theme or if you just want to keep everything looking cohesive. A few other apps that I use to both create and plan my content is CapCut, which I use for making reels and TikTok videos, Canva to create graphics, Lightroom Mobile to edit my photos, and I think those are kind of the main ones. But if you have an app that you use for your own Instagram or your dog's Instagram, comment it down below so that you can share it with other people. And I just have two final points here. One is, you know, fairly basic. Don't expect instant growth to happen. I know it's hard in the social media space to see other people's accounts who have grown significantly in what seems like a short amount of time and get discouraged. But don't, you know, try to be like them. Just focus on what you do best and apply these strategies of engaging with others, tagging brands, planning out your content, and growth will come eventually. It won't be sudden, um, you know, unless you get lucky, like some people do, get featured on some major page. But more likely than not, it's gonna be a slow, steady growth, and I wouldn't just get focused on the numbers. I would be more concerned with the engagement of your content, if that's a metric you're looking at, or, you know, at the end of the day, just have fun with it. Because that's what having a dog Instagram is all about. And for an advanced tactic for getting some Instagram engagement and growth on your account, you can always try boosting posts. And you do this by opening your Instagram account, going to a well-performing post that already has some likes, some comments, and then tapping the promote button. And then from there, you choose your objective, you choose your audience, you choose your budget, and you can boost that post. And basically that will show as sponsored in the feed. And I've used that a few times just to get some extra engagement and followers to my account. And it has worked, you know, pretty well. But I wouldn't focus on that necessarily because then you'd just be spending all your money on boosting your Instagram posts. But if you did every once in a while want to throw in a little bit of budget, it wouldn't hurt to do so. <laughs> Milton, you are tea. Did you like the dog Instagram video? Well, everyone, that's all I have for how to grow a dog Instagram in 2021, 2022. And you know, things are changing every day, so 
who knows what I say now might not be valid a week later but I hope at the very least that this was helpful to anyone who is looking to start an Instagram from a normal person's perspective not from like this major big account so I'm just a normal person giving these tips and I hope that you found them helpful and that you enjoy your dog Instagram journey. If your dog has an Instagram, comment down below so I can follow them and you know definitely give us a follow. Our link is in our description. It's just milton.the.corgi, but it's down there if you want to give us a follow. And we'll see you all in the next video. Bye.